In this Magic View tutorial, we're going to take a look at the user manager function and how you can create new user accounts and assign different privileges when you're setting up these accounts. Uh, we're going to log into the controller version of the software under the default administrator. And as we open here, if you look along the top, we're going to click on user manager. On the left hand side, you'll see a list of existing user accounts. Uh, if this is the first time logging in, you'll only have the default administrator. And on the right hand side, you can see a list of all the different privileges you can assign for a new user account. Um, if we take a closer look under media, you can allow somebody to have the, the rights to upload new content, rename and move it around, delete it, download from the server if you're working on the client side. Uh, then also under the category, you give them the rights to create new folders to, to organize the media. Uh, similar idea for layout and timetable as well. And then you have rights to allow them to publish new schedules, edit, move them around, delete. Uh, and then if we look down here at the bottom, you can see these two groups, client and client group. This will be more for managing the client side. Uh, if you have a large network with multiple clients, you can have somebody dedicated who's just in charge of managing that so they can add new clients into your network, edit them, delete them, and also put them into groups to be able to schedule the same content to play back across all the different clients that you would like to, to do there. Uh, for user, this is more for the administrator. You can uh, give them the rights to create new user accounts, edit existing ones, and delete them. And if we look down at the bottom, you can just add extra privileges to view the different reports and log files. And you can also assign which version of the software they can log into, the controller or the client. Uh, if you're using just one single computer, such as like the VideoWall Mini, where it's sort of your client and the controller all in one, you're going to want to give the rights to log into both. So we're just going to make an example here of making a new administrator. We'll call them admin1. Give them a password. And then under user type, there's sort of five default settings for different types of jobs that could be created. So we're going to click administrator. And then for description, you can add a little bit of note. Uh, what's their job function? Whatever else you think is important in there. And then we'll just click OK. And we can see on the left hand side, our new administrator has been created. And if we click on them, you can see pretty much everything has been enabled for them. Uh, if you've been using the software already, you may have noticed whenever you do an action, be it upload content, create a new layout, it'll ask you to approve every action you're making. Uh, at the beginning, this is just sort of a default setting to make sure you're proceeding correctly. But as you get more familiar, you might find this a little bit cumbersome. So we can turn that off by clicking Auto Approve. So we'll do that for layout and timetable as well. And we'll click Save. Now again, if you have a, a large network of media players connected, you may want to have different users focusing on different jobs. Uh, we've already made an example of a, a client user, so their job would just be managing the client side. So we've given them the privileges under client and client group so they can add new clients, manage them, uh, make sure everything is running smoothly there. We've also allowed them to upload and download content to them as well as layouts, timetable, and schedules to be able to publish the play back there. I'm just going to run through a quick example of creating a designer. Now the idea would be they're going to be in charge of uploading content, using that content to put into layouts, and uh, making new timetables to be published across. So under user type, we'll select designer and click OK. And if we click on them, we can see that most of the privileges have been granted for media, layout, and timetable. Uh, for the client side, that's not important for their job function, so we'll leave those blank. Uh, what you're probably going to want to add, though, is these audit buttons. This will allow them to approve decisions they're making, and if you want to go a step further, you can allow it to auto-approve so they don't have to keep clicking on everything. We'll add that for layout and timetable as well. But you notice they don't have any rights to schedule. So basically the idea would be they create everything up that's ready to be pushed out to playback, but you would have a sort of a break here or an administrator could step in, check, make sure the content they design is acceptable, and then it could be approved to be allowed to be put into the, the final scheduling. Now if I just shut down the software, we're going to log back in under our new designer just to see what the difference is. Now you're going to notice 
Along the top, they only have a couple of the tabs. They have the Media Library, Layout Manager, and Timetable Designer. So by just granting these privileges, it sort of streamlines the user interface to have the tools they need readily available. It just makes it a little bit easier for them to, to navigate around. So again, they'll have full rights to, to manage your media library, do the layout management, as well as timetable designer. That's just a quick look at how you can create different user accounts and assign privileges for specific job functions. Uh, if you need a little bit more reference, you can always check back to the materials that were provided with the software, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.